She's a full professor and vice principal of research and innovation at UNISA. She holds a PhD in mathematics education. Two years ago, she was voted the most influential woman in education and training by CEO magazine. She has held numerous academic positions. She sits on boards and has been invited to speak at more than 40 international conferences. She's won several awards for her outstanding research and community work, and most recently was awarded the Order of the Baobab in silver by President of South Africa, Jacob Zuma, for her excellent work in the field of mathematics education. We welcome Professor Mamukheti Paking. Prof, pleasure to have you with us on the show. Thank and uh, I also had the opportunity of catching up after so many years of yes. not having a talk with you. And I'm told you are on your way somewhere. Yes, I'm on, on my way to UCT. Uh -huh. um, the mountain and the sea, how can I say no? Exactly. So this is happening, what, in a month or so? so in 37 time. days, to be exact. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I'm starting there on the 1st of July. Okay. Um, Same, similar position as the one you're it's, holding on? It, it's... it's Similar, but it's also different. I'll be Deputy Vice Chancellor for Research and Internationalization. Uh, but of course, UCT is a research intensive university, yeah. unlike UNISA. UNISA uh -huh. is mainly a teaching university. Okay. And UCT is research intensive. So research at UCT is big business. Yes. Uh, it's a much bigger enterprise than uh -huh. it is at UNISA. So even though the position looks similar, it's yes. different because the magnitude of the enterprise. And the responsibility is slightly different yes. to the, what you were busy with at, uh, at, at UNISA. UNISA. Yes. And, and you, you were, you, you've been teaching forever yes your entire adult life basically yes just yes. at different levels yes it's almost like a step ladder of teaching that's been placed before you yes and then you take the first step second and so forth yeah goes back to Hebron Training College yes it appears. that's where I started is that where you studied or you just I, started when you, when you became a lecturer? Well, I did, I did my matric at Hebron. Okay. Uh, uh, standard 9 and 10 at uh -huh. the time. We were the last group of matriculants yes. at Hebron. Yes. So when I did standard 9, we were the last group and uh -huh. then we went to, to standard 10. It was a, a training college, of course, a college of education. So, you know, the teachers' uh, diplomas were there, but we were matriculants. Um, and then I went to university and then went back to teach there. Uh, it wasn't planned, you know, mm. it was after getting my degree, um, I had planned to go and do an honors. I didn't have funding. Yes. And one day I decided, let me go to my high school and yes. just see how it's doing. Yes. And it was a college, of course, I yes. went there and talked to my teachers and, and, and I, they asked me what I'm doing. I said, well, um, um, I, I wanted to study, I don't have a job. And uh, I had obtained 74% for my pure mathematics yes. uh, uh, major at final year and they were like, wow, we don't have a mathematics lecturer. Yes. Can you come and teach, teach here? And that's and how that's, it happened. Yeah, and, uh, but I did it for one year at, at Hebron and then, and then proceeded to, to go and study and, and life happened. Okay, now, I'm going to go all over the place and this is yeah. what happens, you see, when you talk to people you are familiar with. Okay. <laughs> so you never know whether yeah. to ask about the neighbor's problems or to talk about their own personal careers, right? Uh -huh. I like the story that you and, and Brian Molefe were in the same class at some point. Yes, yes, at Tutatebe. We, yeah? we are, of course, both from Zone 2, Harankua. Yeah. And we went to Tutatebe. Tutatebe was a middle school. Uh, it doesn't exist anymore. Um, but it, it started uh, uh, after Burtatswana happened to Harankua. Yes. Because that's what happened. And, and we were some of the first students. And we did... Um, Standard at, at that time it was standard seven and eight uh -huh. uh, together. So uh, he was a debater. He okay. was brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> he was he, a brilliant. He continues debater. to do that. As a <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised at what Brian has become because yes. he was he was very smart, and and he was a very he was an excellent debater. Uh, he would That's probably cool. say the same about you too. <laughs> you know, and say, well, I'm not surprised that she's a professor today. <laughs> But now the journey of teaching up to where you are and achieving great things, speaking at conferences, contributing articles to books and so forth, ha has been a very rewarding one, I'd like to believe. But was it always something in the horizon that you imagined, you dreamt about, you were inspired to achieve? Uh, you know, being an academic is something, when I grew up, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't something that we thought about. Mm. I can call it an unthinkable. Mm. Because it wasn't something that we dreamt about. People dreamt about professional fields. Yes. And so I, I bumped into the possibility of being an academic when I did my honors at VETS. Okay. And, and, and I looked at the professor, Professor Jill Adler, who was, who was lecturing us uh, mathematics education. I was like, wow. I mean, she was excellent. And mm. I loved mm. what she was doing. I thought I could do that. And after my master's, when I completed my master's, I went to, his, to her office and I chatted to her and asked her, 
I, I, I really asked her in this way. I said, how can I have your job? Mm. And, and she said, oh, and I said, no, not exactly your job. <laughs> the one that <laughs> you occupy. the type of job that the you do. The type of job yeah. you do. What does it take? Yes. And so she, she then told me, you know, you got to have a PhD. And then she got interested in the fact that I'm interested in academia. Yes, yes. And so, so she then um, uh, uh, invited me to participate in her research project. Uh, she collected data in my, in my uh, uh, classroom. I was a teacher at that time, a mathematics teacher mm. in Ranfontein. Mm. And she collected data in my class. I became one of the teachers that she was working with in her research. Yes. And, and that's how my journey went in. It was seeing someone who's good at being an academic and, and really loving that and, and, and realizing that academia is a space for ideas. It's a space where if you love engaging with ideas, if you're curious, then you, you, you can have a fantastic career. And I, I'm curious mm. and, and, and I really like getting into spaces, thinking about ideas, uh, asking questions. And, and so it, it, it was very attractive. And the fact that you, you can actually, it's, it's, it's a kind of career where you decide what to do. Yes. You don't necessarily have a boss saying, this is the research you do, you don't do this one, you do that one. Um, uh, important thing or, is- Or have a, a foreman. So four no. men following you around <laughs> no. on all 4G the whole time. No, you have to be <laughs> self-driven. And you, yeah. when you have ideas, then you have questions that you're passionate about. So the important thing is to have a problem that you're passionate about, that you want to pursue, that you want to explore, and then you can become the best in that. Mm -hmm. And then everyone all over the world wants to hear what you are thinking before you, you, you even write it down. Yes. You know, so, so it, was, it was really that. And, and I have to, I, I mean, I give Professor Jill Adler the credit because it was seeing her doing what she does mm. so well mm. that made me think, I could do that. Uh, I'm sure it's something that I can enjoy. I love what you're saying and the enthusiasm with which you say it. Yeah. Because mathematics yeah. is one of those mysterious things. Yeah in our community in particular, and for young people in particular, right? Mm -hmm. Now for you, it's like a walk in the park. It's like, you know, you're going for a swim type of thing <laughs> when you talk about it. What is it about mathematics that uh, terrifies young people so much? Or what is it about the system that makes it difficult for young, to attract many young people and get them to succeed in that field of uh, the study of mathematics? Okay, firstly, I, I, I must clarify that it's not a walk in the park. Okay. In the park, and Forest. it shouldn't be. Yes. No learning. Otherwise, I would study it myself. You see. Well, so, and well, then no what, what will happen? <laughs> no learning is a walk in the park. Yeah. Learning is supposed to make you uncomfortable. Yes. And developmental psychologists will talk about it as a, as a, it puts you in a state of disequilibrium. Uh -huh. And 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 because that's growth. So learning is like that, and mathematics is one of those. Just like history should make you mm. stretch a bit. Mm. If you don't stretch, mm. then you're not learning then nothing is you've supposed to, have, to trans You've got to have respect for you, that. For exactly, the, yeah. but that's the joy of yes, learning. Yes. If, they, if that is not there, then there is no joy. And that's how I approach yeah. uh, everything that I do, and particularly mathematics. But there's also something else about mathematics. And firstly, uh, there's a, so, so three things. The second thing is the, is the fact that uh, we have normalized the idea that mathematics is hard. Mm. So somehow people feel comfortable to say I wasn't good at math. And I think that's the first thing that we have to do away with. Yes. Because you can have a very high level person, very respected, and they are not ashamed to stand up and say, I was never good at that. Or mm. maybe they tell them what I do and they immediately confess mm. that, that they hate mathematics. Mm. And that's not good because nobody ever confesses um, uh, being ba having been bad at geography or, or language, or, or, yeah. you know, somehow people are embarrassed to do that yes. because how can you not have been good at geography? Yes. What's wrong with yes. you? But with mathematics, it's sort of a badge of honor, uh. and that's that's the problem. And I always say, if we want to change where we are with mathematics, we've, we've got to start with that. If you have nothing good to say about mathematics, don't say anything at all. Yes. Okay. Because because then you are you are saying it is okay to uh -huh. be bad at maths. Mm. Okay. Now, then the third thing that makes it dif uh, that makes it difficult for the learners um, is the nature of mathematics. Mathematics, unlike others, many other subjects, is a is a hierarchical subject. It's connected. So the concepts are connected. So the maths that you learn at grade one that might look like it's, it's not significant. Mm. It's very significant for the maths that you're going to learn in grade five, in grade. If you don't get grade four maths, you can forget about so grade. So it's a step by step. It's, it's like a, a chain. Yes. Yeah. It's like step by step build. And it's a chain. So mm. 
if you don't understand the concept of number, then fractions are impossible to mm, get. Mm. Uh, uh, you, 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 you can pretend you got them by memorizing mm. uh, particular steps, but you're going to get thrown at some stage. And if you don't have fractions, then algebraic expressions are impossible. Then the remainder theorem can't work. If you don't get algebra, then, then you can't do calculus. Mm. And so it goes. Mm. And so it's connected. And so when teachers teach mathematics, I, I always say the, the, the difficulty between, about being a mathematics teacher is the fact that you don't only have to know the mathematics yourself. So it's not everybody who's good at mathematics themselves who can be a good teacher. Mm. Because being good at mathematics yourself means that you can solve the maths problem for yourself. And if, if there's something wrong with the solution, you can say, what's you can say it's wrong, yeah. and then you can do it right. But being a teacher requires much more than that. You've got to be able to do that. And then you've got to be able to, when you work with students, and they give you a wrong solution, not only should you be able to say, to recognize that it's not correct, you have to be able to diagnose Right. why it is not correct, yes. where and the problem is. And doing that is about identifying the missing piece. Exactly. So where did, where did the child miss it's the point? The point. Yeah. So that if they miss it at fractions, you can fix it there, then it, yes. will, it will solve all the problems. But now, ahead. let's talk about mathematics. It's a very important subject, what we've just discussed here. I can yes. see it's a very involved thing, and I would like to discuss it separately. Mathematics and your life uh -huh. it's changed your life, or defined it, rather. Oh, it changed my life completely. Completely. Um, uh, people are, are ask, I mean, it, it, getting a doctorate changed my life, but choosing mathematics changed my life. I mm. mean, and, and I had no idea when I did it. But of course, the beauty of it is that I, I didn't go into mathematics because mm. I wanted it to change, into, mm. to change my life. I went into it because it made sense to me. It was yes. a subject that made sense more than any other subject that I didn't have to memorize. I could just do, but, get into it and make sense of it. Here you are, a celebrated person. You are being appointed here, appointed there. You, you get invited there and so on. And, uh, well, congratulations, by the way, uh -huh. on being recognized even by the nation because Thank the you. president was bestowing the award on behalf Thank of you. South Africa. That was surreal. I mean. Yeah, so it's a fantastic honor, Thank most you. definitely. So what does this all mean for you? You know, it's not the end of the road. Mm. You're still going to Table Mountain. You're still going to have more accolades come your way at this point in your life? What does this all mean? I mean, every, every achievement that I get, for me, is a responsibility. You know, I keep saying, well, I'm getting this, but, but it's uncomfortable to be getting this alone. I want to I get this. I want other people to get it. And I always ask, how did I get here? Mm. And how do I make sure that other young people who are like me or who looked like me when I was their age. Mm. How do I make sure that more of them get, get to where I am? And, and so if each of the accolades that I get are, are just that, a responsibility. A responsibility to make sure that I'm not the last and I'm not the only one. And, and, and to make sure that I contribute to, to changing the futures of other young people who, who can look at me and say, yeah, it's possible. But not only do that, that I can be available to hold their hand and make sure that they get to where, where I am. And even further, I always say to young people when they say, oh, I want to be just like you when mm. I grow up. Mm. And I say, that's great, but actually, that's such a shabby dream. <laughs> you can have a better dream because there's something, something better than, than me. You yes. know? And I say to them, and actually, you can get better because you're living at a different time, yes. at a better time than, than when, I, when exactly. I was 15 or 16. Yeah, yeah. well, Prof, Pleasure talking to you. Thank you. And I know we must talk some more. Yes. And I wish you everything of the best. Thank you very much. Uh, in Cape Town. And uh, yeah, well, I'm pleased. I just, we made a call. You come through. So, well, it's good to know How that we can. How can I say do. no? Huh? How can I say no to Big Brother? <laughs> of I course. Mean, <laughs> I can't. Of course. We've got bragging rights, you see. Some of us say, I know her when she was still a little girl, a little child. So, <laughs> very proud of you. Thank you. And thank you very much. That's uh, Professor Mamukheti Paking, who is the current vice chancellor at UNISA. She's on her way to the University of Cape Town, where she's taking up the position of vice chancellor for research and uh, everything of the best to you. We continue with the show in a moment.